Hello everyone, and welcome to this devlog about Mind to the Beat. For people who don't know, during Ludum Dare 48, we made a game about a dwarf mining to the beat. Game Special and TK I Muse, that is. What I want to do now is recreate the game, but make it better, modular, and a bit more balanced. In this devlog, I want to talk about levels. During the jam, we made a simple solution of making levels with textures. I am planning on making a video on that, so I will link that in the top right when it is out. In the full game, we want the levels to be procedural. We just want to give the generator a value on how deep you are and a random seed. And with those two variables, the generator should create different sizes and shapes. And it should fill it with ores and enemies. The levels should be unpredictable, but fair. They need to be random and still make sense. This sounds like just the thing I want to make. Procedural levels. And instead of showing you the progress I have made so far, I will actually explain how the generator works, giving you an in-depth look into every single pass. The first pass seems really random. Basically what I'm doing is checking if a random number is below a falloff value. This means that if a check is close to this well, wall, it will be less likely to place a walkable tile there. Then the second pass uses cellular automata. This algorithm checks the amount of neighbors it has and based on that it can do one of two things. If it is a walkable tile and it has two little neighbors, it will delete the tile. If the tile is empty but it has a lot of neighbors, it will make the tile walkable. And with just three iterations, you can already see the levels taking shape. The third pass is about making the levels less open. We do want the player to have movement options, but not too much. We also need to restrict the player to make the level a little harder. I do this by checking every tile and counting empty spots. If it has a very few, let's say two or less, it means it is an open space and thus it can be deleted. Now the levels look more like tunnels. And then the fourth pass, which is small but necessary due to our tile map. You see, above every tile there needs to be a gap of two, since we want to add a wall and a ceiling tile there. And this pass ensures the gap is there. The fifth pass ensures we only have this large cave and gets rid of these unreachable places. It would suck if the player cannot reach the exit or something variable. The algorithm just grabs the first tile and does a flood fill to check how many tiles are in that region. It does this until every tile has been checked and it then removes all of the tiles of the smaller regions, leaving only this big one. And that's basically the generation done. I do also compress the grid I use, since I don't want any dead space on these sides, but those are not really level gen passes. After these passes, I want to give the tiles some additional data. For example, the amount of tiles away from a wall. This might seem a little strange, because why do I want this data? Well, like I said before, we want to limit the movement of the player, but we don't want to make it impossible. By knowing how far a tile is away from a wall, the generator can place certain objects in certain positions. It can spawn breakable objects near walls, making sure the player can always break them and walk past something especially useful in this level, where it is a very tight squeeze through this gap. And I want the distance to the player. 
Of course we first need to position of the player to spawn, but we can just do this randomly. I can also use the previous data and always spawn the player on a tile away from the wall. From that position I just do a plot fill and save the distance to that random player spawn position. Again, why do I want this data? Well, we don't want the player to spawn next to an enemy or a boss. It could kill the player instantly for example, and we don't want that. We also don't want the rarest ore and then an exit to be near the player spawn. This would make the game a little too easy. By using the distance from the player we can spawn rare objects, bosses and an exit away from the player, ensuring the player actually needs to walk through the level to get to the end. And that's the data. All of the generation passes and this data is nice, but the game looks kind of boring now. I guess it is time for me to add the art we had during the jam. We can always iterate on the art later on. Maybe I can add those grass and pebble decorations as well. This is just spawned per tile with a random offset, which looks really nice. And that's all of the level gen for now. In a later video I can add all of the gameplay objects like ores and enemies. I mean, I already have the data to spawn them. Thank you guys for sticking to the end. Please leave a rating and a comment to show your love and subscribe for more devlogs like this one. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.